Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to a Reactivity Amano Gotta Ari. Um, this is a re-upload. I'm in a new location, okay? Uh, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna, welcome to the dentist's office. It's gonna be a great time here. Reason that we're re-uploading this video is because the last version got taken down and I got in trouble. YouTube didn't like it, so they said, you do this again, you're gonna get a copyright strike. Uh, and those are really bad. If I get too many of those, the channel goes poof, gone. So the reason behind that I can't, I gotta like hide my language because I think the auto stuff is picking stuff up. You know what I mean? With YouTube. The reason is the, uh, the, the Ippies. You know what I mean by the Ippies? The little p Ippies, the little things that you go, ooh, 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 wow, full opacity, full audio. This is kind of interesting. That whole situation. Yeah, I think that's what made it happen. So, um, I don't know if I can keep doing that. And I might have to go back and clean up my other videos to hide a little bit, if you know what I mean, because I don't want the channel to get deleted. So... Not exactly what's, sure what's going to be going on there, but I'm letting you know if it's not there, that's why. I wish I could. I wish I could give it to you. Maybe I can get it over on the Patreon because you know I, it kind of it kind of gets it. You know, it's like indirect a bit more, but that's the situation there. Um, also, the comments for last episode whew, gone in wind. I didn't even read them. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't read them before the video got deleted. So, episode five comments. You know, if you want to yap a little bit on this one, just you know, a little bit of something, feel free. Um, I'm gonna be watching episode six pretty soon, probably within a day, if not like kind of immediately. So we'll see, maybe it might take an extra, it might take an extra episode for me to actually get around to them, but that's the situation there. And yeah, pretty much that's that. Um, I'm three weeks late, thoughts chat? <laughs> uh, it's episode seven came out today and there's a 6.5. So plan is I'm gonna watch six and then 6.5 and seven, I think I was told are good together to get real quick, caught back up, should be good, but I will be seeing you then chat. Um, enjoy episode five. In up, in up, in up. Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to a reaction to Amano Gara Ri. Um, turn on episode of five of Not a Mano Gara off slash Monster Season. Um, so boom comments episode four. You know how it goes, okay? Also, shout out to this. Oh, I'm I'm commenting on the video. Yip, yippee! You know what I mean? Like like yeah. All right. Anyways, though, let's um talk Mano Gara a little bit. So a lot happened last episode. Um, I'm not gonna like, let me just start with comments and then I'll, we'll scroll through it after. Um, but I've been sitting here for like 20 minutes scrolling through the episode myself. So we're, we should be kind of good. Let's see though. Um, first, Anunoki's new appearance, uh, is from her getting dismembered. That is kind of like, I think what I ended think, ended up thinking at the end, ended up thinking at the end. Yeah. Um, it's just like, it was such clean cuts that I was kind of like, where are we at? Maybe I missed something, but no, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I think that makes sense. Um, basically thumbs up emoji. Um, one big conversation piece, which kind of is like this comment and like this comment also, um, and a couple others, honestly, is basically like, how do we contextual, like, what do we think of the Nadecos right now? What are we thinking of the plural Nadecos? Uh, I think there's a really fun question, which I was kind of, I don't know, I've been super back and forth on the answer to it. The question basically is like, how do the four Nadecos feel about current Nadeko's life, let's say, right? And so like, for example, um, freaking flirty Nadeko says, calls current Nadeko embarrassing, right? Uh, and so I, w I was kind of back and forth where I'm, where I'm thinking like, okay, is embarrassing her like in some really roundabout way supporting what, what current Nadeko is doing in kind of the way Ogi was talking about where it's like, oh, they're going to be, like, envious of your ability to, like, uh, do your manga stuff, right? So is, is you know, Flirty Nadeko being, like, really roundabout approving, or is she being negative towards it, right? Um, I think this, I think it was this comment, but, um, right here, I absolutely agree with this uh, a million percent, which is basically at their core, each of the four Nadecos are caring and want to help current Nadeko, but their defining features are being dialed to 11 and warps their actions. Yeah, like, I think what makes them so interesting is that I think they all want what's best for Nadeko. Obviously, they all have very different ideas of what is best for Nadeko, um, to the point that, like, Wrath Nadeko straight up tried to shank her, you know, be like, now is your turn to rest, right? And so, and I had a, I had a little bit of a thought that I, I don't think is true, but I, I almost thought to myself, maybe like Wrath Nadeko let herself get like lose a little bit. Is that too? I think that's a little too crazy for me, but cause she does the entire point with Wrath Nadeko charging is that she had like said her action already about spilling her innards so that current Nadeko could like do a plan to counteract that. 
So maybe Wrath Nadeko like low key wanted that, but I don't know. That's a bit. That's a bit. I think that's that's a little bit too a uh, guessworky for me. Um, but yeah, I do think all of them want what's best for Nadeko. They all want it in different ways. Uh, that leaves the question though of how do they feel about what current Nadeko is currently doing? And so like, this is kind of on that right. So I'll read some of this. I think you're totally missing the fact that yeah, embarrassment is a good thing, but it is bad for Flirty and Nadeko. She's condescending about it. Flirty and Nadeko. Flirty Nadeko is the type to only accept validating feelings and reject uncomfortable ones. Um, she cringes at the proclivity of embarrassment and does nothing about it. Instead, continue to mask away her self-ego made shame. This is the thing Kaiki criticizes. Um, it's embarrassing to both of them. They react differently to it. Kern Nadeko and Flirty Nadeko, right? And so this would be saying that... And I, and I, I think this is probably... This is probably what I'm leaning towards right now. That both Flirty Nadeko and Wrath Nadeko, I mean, especially with Wrath Nadeko, um, disagrees with what current Nadeko is doing, and so they're giving other avenues to, like, exist, right? And so, you know, Flirty Nadeko's, I really like this idea of, like, oh, maybe Flirty Nadeko is trying to help current Nadeko's school situation by raising her social standing. I think that's, I think that's really fair. I think that's probably what she was, I think that's, I think it's fair to say that's what she was doing, right? Um, and then Wrath Nadeko, I think she, you know, she's trying to give Nadeko, uh, an excuse to rest. There is kind of the question of, like, was she trying to kill current Nadeko, you know, with the, I'm a slasher innards, or was she just gonna, like, injure current Nadeko to force current Nadeko to rest? Or was killing her the version of rest that Wrath Nadeko was going for, right? Um, but yeah, especially with the context of Wrath Nadeko, I feel like both, or I think, I feel like the past Nadekos disagree with what current Nadeko is doing and they're trying to give alternatives and then current Nadeko is having to shut them down to basically prove that she's doing what she wants to do. So she's like, it's like she's getting her doubts thrown at her in her face where Flirty Nadeko is trying to trying to tempt her with these other things. Wrath Nadeko is saying, you know, maybe you should rest. I know you actually don't want to do this, right? So she's getting attacked from all these different angles and she's having to fight them off, which is a way to affirm what she's currently doing. That's kind of like how I feel like it is right now. Um, and especially with, Wrath Nadeko coming after Flirty Nadeko, I feel like that characterizes like, oh, Wrath Nadeko did not want nothing to do with the manga business, right? And so that kind of makes me think that Flirty Nadeko probably didn't at all either, which would be to say that this is like correct, that Flirty Nadeko is anti um, the embarrassment. Uh, yeah. And then that leads us to assume that both Meek Nadeko and God Nadeko are probably doing something similar where they're, they both think they're helping Nadeko by their own ways and they're kind of showing off the current, the, the current Nadeko different ways to live her life right now, other than like the manga grind set. Um, and so current Nadeko is going to have to fight against those to kind of prove that she, what she's doing is what she really wants to do. Yeah. But I don't think they want to like start just like kill or replace her freaking body snatcher type B, you know, anything like that. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at with the Nadekos right now. Um... Like, and similarly with Flirty Nadeko offering advice in a roundabout way as doing it directly would be embarrassing. Yeah, it's like, it's like that kind of thing where I, I do think they're trying to help, but, you know, it's, I don't know, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, yeah, everybody's, like, how do we fix the planet? Everybody's got different ideas, you know? Like, everybody has different ideas for how to fix problems. And so I feel like we're getting an example of one person has a problem, Nadeko has her manga issue, and she is has a bunch of different ideas of how to fix it, right? What she act, like, what route do I actually pursue in life? And then this is kind of the, um, the, 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 what's result, uh, what's resulted from that. And, um, this line I thought was very, probably pretty true. Also judging by the pattern so far, how much you want to bet Meek Nadeko is, is the one actually in control of God Nadeko. That's, I mean, I wouldn't, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of, I think, I don't remember if I said it or if, or if the show said it, um, but there was some, like, they were talking about how, like, uh, Ononoki said, oh, no, what if we have two god Nadekos walking around, you know? And then I feel like there was an idea somewhere in either the, the discussion or the episode, I don't remember if they said it or not, that's like, oh, what if, like, I think I said it, honestly, what if meek Nadeko makes god Nadeko more weak, right? So you basically just invert it, uh, and I think that very well could be the case or something like this, that meek Nadeko is really the shot, Kala. Um... And kind of, there's another comic that kind of gets into this. Also, this is the truest thing I've ever read in my entire life. Uh, shout out this line. Um, but yeah, let me find the other comment. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, this, 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 right? 
Um, considering the frequent uses of misdirections early in several of the Monogata arcs, it could be possible that something similar is happening here. In all three cases, Nadeko and Onanoki are expected to find meet Nadeko, but find the others instead. Could it be possible that instead of the other Nadekos forcing Meet Nadeko to cooperate, Meek Nadeko is instead actively doing these things and luring current Nadeko and Onanoki to the other Nadekos? So basically saying, Meek Nadeko is the giga brain. This was all part of my plan in the background. Could this be the case, right? Uh, and I do, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I think this is a good point uh, that it is worth remembering that the whole Otori Monogatari story was conjured up by Nadeko in the Meek form. Um, but on, on also just that Meek Nadeko was the longest, like the biggest Nadeko pause, but like the one that lasted the longest pause again, but like the one that like was alive the longest. There we go. Um, right. Because it was the Wrath Nadeko was only around for a pretty short time. Flirt, flirty Nadeko, like around Araragi when he, she tried to play Twister with him. And then God Nadeko was for like, I don't remember exactly how long that was, but within a few months. Yeah. And so... Meek Nadeko, though, was literally years and years and years before that, I think pretty much her entire life. So I wouldn't be surprised. And like, also think about it. Meek Nadeko was the first chronologically of the Nadekos to spawn, right? She was the, she's, if anything, she's the closest to the original Nadeko. And so, you know, God Nadeko came after. So I wonder if there's kind of like a, a sense of like, Nade Meek Nadeko was the one that originated the Nadekos to come. That would maybe give, like, Meek Nadeko some sort of power over the others, in a sense. You know? Or, like, some sort of narrative reason as to why Meek Nadeko would be the one more in charge, or at least the one that's kind of shot-calling or are aware of what's going on the best. Um, yeah, also it's a really good point of that they keep expecting to find Meek Nadeko, but find other ones instead. That's a pretty... That is a pretty interesting point, right? Um, so... Agreed. But yeah. Ram. Ding, 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 uh, ding. The, the pool micro bikini apparently is canon. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, um, shout out all the people with the engagement bait. You love to see it. This, uh, well, okay. One thing about that right here. You can't be engagement baiting in a title though. You're going to end up hurting your search. I have something to do with search uh, algorithm stuff. You have to pronounce something wrong in the video itself. But I already do that. I already do that so much that people have just given up on t commenting about it. You know? I'm just, you know, so I gotta, I gotta start to improvise, man. Also, this engagement bait, what are you whapping about? I don't know why, but seeing this image with what are you whapping about is probably the best thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it's so good. And like, and, I, and the crazy thing is, I read, what are you whapping about? I looked down at my keyboard. Y and W are pretty far apart. This wasn't a, a typo for yapping. This was whapping on purpose. Isn't that just magical? Anyways, Nadeko. Um, so yeah. Is, is Meek Nadeko the one in charge? I could, I would expect, honestly, because there are usually twists and misdirections, that probably is the one I would expect the most. But then me saying that out loud makes me feel like I shouldn't expect it, and that something else is actually going to happen, which makes me not expect it anymore. This show is too good, bro. I feel like it's, you can't, I don't even try to predict anymore. You know what I, like, well... <laughs> Well, I have tried to predict in the past that we got the two Ogies incident, okay? So, like, at this point, you just gotta hold on to the ride and make sure you're enjoying it. I feel like that's the real moment, the real thing. But, um, I thought there's an entire thing I'm missing here. This, this I wanted to talk about. So, I really, I like this first, this first point I really like, so let's start with that. But, um, feel free to laugh at me when they're all wrong. That's okay. I won't, I won't even laugh, because we enjoy the, the cooking for the sake of cooking is always good, you know what I mean? But, yeah. But, um, so the comment says, firstly, I feel as though Nadeko is regressing a little bit. Um, let me find da, 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 with her like entering the room, entering Aragi's room and stuff. Uh, she says once Wrath Nadeko is beaten, and another time she says, "quote Current Nadeko can't be depressed forever," uh, which is her talking in the third person, right? Which is how she speaks in the Tori Monogatari novels. Uh, and then there's like the line of "There's a mark left on the floor, but it's an unnoticed, it's unnoticeable until it is noticed," and that was like the the Wrath Nadeko attack on the floor. Um, all these things, plus her wearing the cap, it's kind of a question of, like, is she regressing into her, like, more meek state where she was, like, hiding behind her bangs, right? Is that, is that something that could be going on? I think I, I really like, what I really like about this theory is that it gives a reason behind the, there's a mark left on the floor line, right? So that'd be, like, that would be, like, the chip in her, like, because her regressing would be proof that the past Nadecos are kind of right, or, like, that the past Nadecos aren't affecting her, right? 
Uh, so I think it would be natural in the same way that, you know, maybe God Nadeko is going to make Meek Nadeko into another god, right? The Nadekos can influence each other, right? And so perhaps current Nadeko is being made more Meek in some sort of way. And I'm using Meek specifically because I feel like Meek Nadeko do be kind of like potentially the Giga Chad. Um, and, and she, according, like this theory is kind of thinking that she is kind of trying to hide herself again. Uh, and that, and that makes the cap made it make a lot of sense to me too. Cause I was just gushing about how fun, how much I liked the outfit. Right. But it is kind of crazy. She's wearing a cap that covers her forehead, which is like the same thing she was doing with the bangs. And so she could look down and the, the lid of the cap would cover her eyes. Uh, so I actually quite like that. Uh, cause not only does it explain a couple lines and a couple like behaviors, like the new outfit, the line about the mark. Her referring to herself in third person not only does it kind of give reasons as to why those are happening reason being that she's kind of regressing a little bit um but it also i think narratively makes kind of cool sense that she would be impacted by her past current nadecos or like the past nadecos i'll just call them the past nadecos right uh and yeah because that's i mean that's what the past nadecos i think want they want to bring her back and if you're engaging with like these versions of your past like selves, right? These character caricatures of your past selves, I think to have her regress a little bit into what she used to be would make a lot of sense, right? I mean, it could be even be a case of this is a good thing, you know? Maybe in a way, like she jumped too far from her meek Nadeko or origins into current Nadeko. Maybe she overshot and we need to kind of temper herself. She needs to temper herself and bring her back to like a more stable medium or something, right? Like regression isn't even a bad thing because you are you can definitely overshoot. So sometimes if you look back at how you used to be and you look how you currently are, I think it would be fair to say like, maybe I want to spot a little more in between. I don't want to lose how I used to be because I quite like that for reasons, but I also don't hate the changes I've made. Let me see if I can find a happy medium type B. So yeah, I actually quite like that theory. Um... And it makes a lot of sense with her cap specifically. The second theory, um, I, I I like, but I think it's, it's not going to pan out. But I do like the theory because I think it's really funny. It basically is the idea that it, it kind of leads up to here. Well, because there's, there's a lot of sus things that are I think are like the snake venom thing. Nadeko seems confused by the Onanoki's use of snake venom. And then, and then Nadeko kind of changes the subject and says, oh, I don't have to think about that. That's just good. It's just God Nadeko, right? So that makes me think it actually isn't going to be God Nadeko, you know? So there are, like, it's basically, there's a bunch of sus, sus stuff going on, right? The, quote, this line is accompanied by an upwards camera shot from current Nadeko's feet to her eyes, slightly squinting. This is the most suspicious look I have ever seen. <laughs> she must be lying in some way. I just love that. I just love that lie, bro. I have ever seen so true um but the the kind of the culmin the culmination of this this into a workable theory uh is the idea that current Nadeko isn't actually current Nadeko that after current Nadeko ran out of Araragi's house she ran into Mika Nadeko and they switched clothes um and so the current Nadeko from the last episode in like the later half would have actually been Meek Nadeko the entire time right and it's like ooh, that's kind of a that'd be a crazy twist I don't, I, th I don't think it's going to work. My reason, because I actually went through the episode and I was thinking like, hmm, is it, what's the potential of this? So I did, I did give it some thought because I thought it was, I thought it was a cool idea. Um, I don't think it would work because current Nadeko doesn't have bangs and you can, and you kind of see here, see, say here, right? The reason during this scene, we can't see physical difference between the two Nadekos is because her bangs are hidden underneath the hat. But why would current Nadeko do that? What's the point? Uh, maybe she wanted to be replaced by Meek Nadeko. But yeah, basically saying like, Meek Nadeko has her bangs low, current Nadeko has her bangs high, or it doesn't have bangs, right? She has just straight forehead, forehead in it up, you know? And so, yes, Meek Nadeko could disguise as current Nadeko by using the hat because it would cover her bangs, but I don't think current Nadeko could disguise as Meek Nadeko because that's what Onanoki saw, right? And so, and it, maybe if you look at like some crazy chronological order, you can make it work. Oh, maybe that's an idea. Maybe you could squirm out of it. Because I was kind of thinking that, like, Onanoki... How long ago did the Onanoki thing happen? Oh, my goodness. They were talking about chronological stuff. Now I'm sus again. But Onanoki saw Meek Nadeko walking around. And so she couldn't have seen current Nadeko pretending to be Meek Nadeko walking around because of the bang bangs. 
because the bangs, you know? So she had to see Mika Nadeko as Mika Nadeko. And so they go up, and then Ononoki gets, you know, backstabbed and cut apart. I guess there's a chance that Mika Nadeko could then run to the Araragi house and swap with current Nadeko, but I'm not super confident on that. I feel like the Ononoki seeing Mika Nadeko would throw it off. There, I guess there's actually a small chance it could happen, though. Um, unless Ononoki was much more clear in, like, the timeline than I'm remembering, you know? But yeah, I like the I like the theory in abstract, though. I think that would be a really interesting endgame twist. And it is kind of funny, like, we're dealing with all the different Nadekos, but there's been such a focus on how, like, they all look different, so we haven't really... I at least haven't really thought about, like, a body swipper, switcher idea too much. Um, but that very well could be happening, right? Especially with the the swim trunks bloomers thing getting thrown around, um, which is still kind of crazy, you know, um, uh, yeah, but yeah, so there, there, there could be some body snitch, snatch, body swapping shenanigans going around, um, but I'm unsure, I'm mostly unsure, also, I am using MTBB again, uh, um, I just heard it's better, I don't know, maybe it's not, who knows, Ooh, I don't know. Let's pop the episode, the last episode, and scroll through a little bit with all these things in mind, uh, and then we will jump into the new one. I do have my subtitles on, yeah. Yeah, I do. Hmm. Oh yeah, and then she goes. She does, wait. This was so quick. I love this again, though. This was so trippy. Her doing the the say no right before the OP is just crazy. But yeah, like, okay, so like, I was kind of talking about maybe Rath Nadeko allowed herself to lose. My only re reasoning for that is that, ra quote, Rath Nadeko plainly disclosed her attack method, spilling your innards. So she kind of did give current Nadeko a really easy win. Well, no, I say really easy, but like, you know what I mean? I, I, I could see a world that that was intentional in a sense. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that's true. I'm, I, I'm, pro I'm probably gonna lean away from that being true. Um, and more so that Rath Nadeko uh, wanted to win and wanted to, like, have Nadeko rest, as she was saying, which was her trying to help Nadeko in her own way. Um, but I don't know, I just want to once again say that it would have been, that there is a chance, right? Uh, this line is in, 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 uh, is still kind of crazy to me, too. There's a mark left on the floor, but it's so small that you never notice it until you notice it. It's just, that's gotta be an analogy for... I mean, originally, I don't know. I was kind of thinking like, oh, this is this going to be like a funny gag in the future or like something in the future that's going to be relevant. Um, also, one of the comments, I, I skipped past it, was talking about how Nadeko basically framed Ogi for breaking into the Araragi household um, because she ran out and left Ogi's bike there. All right, Ogi's bike is still right here. Though there is a Nadeko thing in the wall, so who's to say, right? But, um, so... You know, maybe there could be like some investigation business as a oh Ogi broke in, we gotta look around, and then they find the mark on the floor, blah blah blah. Like I, that's kind of where I was thinking this would go. Um, but now it makes me think that based off just that last comment, it's making me thinking okay maybe there's some sort of mark on Nadeko that is going to just it's like a it's like a weak spot, right? Some weak spot that flirty Nadeko and Wrath Nadeko have like kind of exposed that then Meek Nadeko is gonna be able to really like dagger into. You know, and I mean, it, and I say that as if it's like, as if it's a maybe, but it, it is a true. It is a true. I mean, Nadeko herself has said how much, um, and I'm sure there are words from my own heart, she says, about R Rath Nadeko's words. Yeah, she. I mean, she she does say pretty, very directly that those words have damaged her, right? Has Had stabbed me sharper and deeper than any chisel could. So, yeah. Oh, and then that... Is that her planting the thing? Wait, what happens? What was that krunk? What was that krunk sound? Oh, does she plant it there? Wait. No, it's already planted there. It's already planted there in this scene. Okay. But yeah, so for her to say... Um... Like, how much the, the Wrath and Deco situation has hurt her, and then we talk about the, the crack in the floor... Um... Is, is pretty crazy. And so it makes me think that that weakness is gonna be exposed in this, uh, in kind of the culmination. Or at least those adjustments in her ideals, you know? But that doesn't mean it's for the worse. I think that's my, 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 my thought I like the most right now, is that even if she does quote unquote regress, or even if she does talk with Mika Nadeko or God Nadeko and find herself unable to like 
really commit to her life as current Nadeko, I still think that could be fine, right? Um, I mean, like, what she's doing right now is facing her doubts, facing her different feelings, right? And they've been, they've been personified. And so if she just, if she doesn't change after facing all those things, then what exactly did we, like, was accomplished, right? I mean, she can, you have all these feelings, I mean, you can beat them all, but, like, it's not wrong to let your feelings change your the course of your life a little bit. Like, you should listen to your feelings to a degree, right? And so, right now, the closest th thing we've got into her, like, listening um, is her saying that Wrath and Deco's words have, like, really cut into her own heart, or cut into her and that they were from her own heart. So she is internalizing them as her own, um, but I suppose I'm still curious if it'll amount to, like, some crazy... Um, I don't know, some sort of change at the end. And then she also introduces herself to freaking uh, Sunjo. That's crazy. And then says, all right, later, I'm gone. And this kind of, somebody in the comments did also say like, why would Senjo Gahara be calling? That's a great question. I have no idea. I have literally no idea. I mean, she could be calling just to check up on the household, right? Like, hey, what's good, Karen? What's good, Tsukihi, you know? Or I have a question, or maybe she thinks Aragi might be there for some reason, you know? Maybe we'll get another arc where Senju Gahar is looking for Adaragi and she makes a phone call and it's like a reference to this arc, right? I don't know. So, what, what was the first thing Senju Gahar says? I think she just says the word Sengoku and that's all we get and then she freaking dips. Dang, that skirt really flies up in the back last second there. My goodness, they're really- <laughs> Senju Gahara. Leave that to the Araragi narrated arcs, okay? Don't be bringing that in. Wait, Nadeko's narrating. Nadeko, what are you thinking of Sandra Gahara here? And then you cut to feet? Okay. Um, I'm just trolling there, don't worry. But yeah, so this is really interesting to me. Um, a lot of the Onanoki stuff. Hmm. I'm a little sus of this moment, like the com one of the comments pointed out. Uh, where was it? Is where they're talking about snake venom. Wait, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just search it. Snake. Uh, I was successfully lured into this shrine and shredded from behind with a snake thing. You know what's interesting about that? Wait. Hmm. So Mignadeka was a decoy. Onanoki was walking up to her. So. And then she got jumped. Yeah. Hmm. And we do see here that it's g like God and Deco stuff. I was thinking for a moment that like the snake fang, anybody could be holding a snake fang, you know? So if Onanoki was, she was shredded from behind specifically. So there could be room that, you know, it wasn't actually God and Deco swinging, but we do get God and Deco's shadow here, but that also just could be that Onanoki believes it was God and Deco. Um, her being attacked from behind is interesting though. But it also, it couldn't really be Meek Nadeko because Neek Nadeko is, was in front of her, it, it kind of seemed to be, right? And she was walked up, so unless Meek Nadeko flipped around and then backstabbed her, but that doesn't really seem to be how it was shown to us, so it probably was God Nadeko. But maybe, uh, like, maybe, yeah. <laughs> familiar being used by another familiar, that's just ridiculous. Uh, it... I really wouldn't be surprised, though, if Meek Nadeko was somehow using God Nadeko. I mean, we really don't know the relationship between the two right now. We really don't. Um, but yeah. And if anything, I mean, Sengoku do be... Why did I call, it? I call her Nadeko? That's what I've been saying the entire time. Nadeko really is kind of like uh, putting disrespect on Meek Nadeko's name a little bit, I feel like. Or, or maybe it was more Onanoki saying the whole... Um, uh, Meek Nadeko falling under God Nadeko's leadership, like kind of jumping to that conclusion... That is kind of disrespect, but to, to meet Nadeko, so I could see that being subverted, but okay. Um, because this this line here, so we're talking about snake venom, and Sengoku is, Sengoku, Sengoku, Nadeko is like, oh, snake venom, that's kind of crazy. No, that's not something I need to pay attention to right now. Isn't that basically code word for this is something Nadeko should be paying attention to right now? Like, th like, doesn't this mean the opposite, actually? <laughs> oh, Snake Venom, that's really interesting. Um, we, we spent some time in the dialogue talking about it. Nah, I'm not gonna focus on that. Ah, now I'm unsure. 
And then she says, of course the culprit has gotten a deco. I mean, now it's like, well, there's no, maybe it's not gotten a deco. I mean, okay, could it be? Who could be holding the snake thing? What if God, wait, 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 wait. What if Meek Nadeko, like, who could, who else would Meek Nadeko be able to talk to? I'm trying to think, because God Nadeko, I'm trying to think, is there a world that God Nadeko wasn't part of it at all? And Meek Nadeko, well, almost at all. And what happened is Meek Nadeko lured somebody in, and then somebody that wasn't God Nadeko, but also wasn't Meek Nadeko, had a, a snake fang and cut up Ononoki from behind. But I don't know who it would be. That would be, an, that'd be a twist, though. Because uh, it was attacked from behind, so Ononoki would assume it's God Nadeko, and that'd be fair. But maybe it wasn't God Nadeko, and Meek Nadeko was still in front of Ononoki, and it was somebody else that Meek Nadeko was working with. But Meek Nadeko is literally Meek Nadeko. Who would you work with? Who? Hey, Tsukihi! <laughs> like, like, I don't know, you know? So, that's kind of a curious spot. Um, and it's like, it being Meek Nadeko, it's like, your entire point is that you, like, don't, I feel like, wouldn't want to work with people. As, like, you'd be kind of scared to, so. It's slightly on the table, but I'm not feeling great about it. I'll just say. I'm just throwing it out. We're just throwing things out there, man. We're just throwing things around. Um. Aw, so sweet. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, anything else this episode? It, it, man, I feel like so much of this was Ononoki yapping. Ara. Which, with all, and it's so much of it is saying, God Nadeko used Meek Nadeko, right? Um, and then this, like, swimsuit business. So we're getting all these pieces, but I, we're not, I'm not entirely sure how they're landing yet, you know? What was the situation here? When Meek Nadeko was walking around, I mean, she was climbing this mountain in a school issued swimsuit. So she was walking around and then she was climbing in the, in the swimsuit. School issued swimsuit. I mean, school issued swimsuit. I mean, the thing about it being a school issued swimsuit is it means anybody could have one. Anybody from the school. So, and we were in Tsukihi's dressing room. But, so, but yeah, I mean, that doesn't really chronologically make any sense. Um, because again, it wouldn't have been like Karna Deco because the hair, and Ononoki I think would have seen the hair, but it being a school-issued swimsuit does open up a lot of avenues for how it could have been gained. Which was first and which was later? When Meek Nadeko was walking around in nothing but bloomers, I guess it could have been a while ago, yeah. Ononoki could have been, like, gone here and gotten, like, iced, like, right away. That's kind of the entire point here. Because Meek Nadeko walking around in nothing but bloomers was Kambaru said that. So, what was first? Because, yeah, okay, so Meek Nadeko could have lured Ononoki up, got an Ononoki killed, stripped into bloomers, and then walked around town. But why? That's where I'm stuck. I, I, don't, I don't know what your end game is other than just be a meek little Nadeko. You know what I mean? I don't know what you're planning. So it's it's hard to even figure out who was doing what. But I feel this is quite an important factor here. Well, now I feel that, that too, and I'm just unsure now, Nadeki. Can I call you Nadeki? Hmm, okay. Well, I'll let that simmer, I suppose. Um... We might have to face two- and like this line, man, they really- in the worst case scenario, we might have to face two god Nadecos. I mean, maybe the worst case scenario is facing two meek Nadecos. Oh, what? wait! That could just be an answer. Which was first and which was later? They could have both happened at the same time. They were both meek Nadeko. Because god Nade maybe- yeah, maybe god Nadeko got turned into meek Nade an another meek Nadeko in an inversion of the idea of two god Nadecos, and both of these happened at the same time. Which- that would kind of explain it, you know? And so, Meek Nadeko was walking around in her bloomers, let's say, and then, well, or Meek Nadeko was walking around in a swimsuit. Wait, the swimsuit. So it would have been, Meek Nadeko would have been in the swimsuit, um, and lured, oh no, but God Nadeko's the one that attacked upstairs. So that couldn't really have happened at the same time, because not God Nadeko, now that doesn't work, because God Nadeko would have needed to be at the shrine to backstab Onanoki. So God Nadeko couldn't be wandering around in bloomers if she was also at the shrine. Yeah, but okay, so okay, this is our situation. Let me clarify. 
there needed to be, I think there needed to be two people at the shrine when Ononoki was backstabbed. Um, other than God Nadeko and Meek Nadeko, I don't know who else could be there. I don't think it necessarily has to be that God Nadeko was there because Ononoki got attacked from behind with a snake fang. It would have needed God Nadeko's help to get a snake fang, but it wouldn't that doesn't mean God Nadeko had to be the one to use it, right? I don't think Onanoki knows who really attacked her. She's just assuming. So that could be the case there, that it was like somebody else or something. Um, Meek Nadeko was there. I don't think current Nadeko body swapped. Uh, but I mean, it could. I mean, there could be a room for that. But that'd be such a crazy twist. And I feel like, I feel like that's just the bad ending. Is if she gives up, you know. So I don't think a body swaps on the table. Um, but now I'm, I'm super sus of the situation again, because you need both of them there for that. I mean, I guess, uh, what, do they have like Nadeko tele telepathy? Can they like Nadeko be like calling all Nadekos? Ononoki's about to get to the top of the mountain. I need you, God Nadeko. You know, do they got Nadeko telepathy? I don't think they do. Yeah. Uh, all I know is that shit's going crazy and that there's going to be a twist and I'm not going to be ready for it. That's what I know. Fled after they took you apart, right? Right. Well, and the way Onanoki's saying this, not so much fleeing, but heading out to kill you after they dealt with me. I mean, she's saying this as if she saw it, and we know she could have seen it because just her head was cut off. Like, she can still see. So maybe she did see it, and did see, and it was both of them. And then they left to go find Nadeko, or do something else, because they, they would have found Nadeko, and Nadeko hasn't exactly been like stealthy you know so i feel like they, they would have found her if they were looking for her just to go kill her right yeah this shot go kind of hard the swimsuit and then the the kind of god nadeko fit double god nadeko mm, oh and we do have the arm thing so we are going to follow the arm um but we didn't want to get any help because we're trying to fix our own mess by ourselves, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Or like the, but yeah. And I, I guess the last thing I'll say before we jump into the episode, because I would, oh my goodness, has it really been 40 minutes? What happened to me, brother? The last thing I'll kind of say is these shots of like Nadeko looking nervous, like, like this shot right here. This shot, that thing I was saying earlier about like current Nadeko maybe regressing a bit. This seems to be her like using her bangs in a sense right where like she would do this and kind of cower behind them she's kind of doing that right here you know where she's stepping back that's a meek that's meek body language and she's covering her eyes right and then onanoki has to say like come on give me some courage you're not alone right and so yeah i i feel like that's a very real thing going on um which i like so i'm i'm curious to see where her like confidence kind of amounts to also it's really cute that she grabs the two papers and then it's the two nadeko <sighs> this is sweet but yeah that's the end yeah okay let's just jump into it man why won't my thing pull up uh okay i'll open out my other monitor and then drag it on sure let's do it this way all right <laughs> why are they doing this to me man like like what am i supposed to like not comment on this you know what I got nothing to say about this. I got nothing to say. Episode five, let's get going. Ram. What's gonna happen? Great question, let's get going in a three, a two, a one. Bang. And back to the Sengoku to strategize. Bro, what if that's a pretty obvious place to go though. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really now? <laughs> New Ononoki fit just dropped? Yo. Oh, Lup Noodles. <laughs> Dang, why does Ononoki look like a, like a skater girl? So what, we gonna bring him back out? Is that your idea, really? I... I... I don't hate the idea, but I don't know how we it would just be different, right? Yeah, 
<laughs> that should be way stronger than Meek Nadeko. <laughs> yeah, Onanoki is putting so much disrespect on Meek Nadeko. Like, so obviously, it makes me just. It's just so sus. Yeah, true. Yeah, we really want to make the same mistake twice. That's kind of facts. Eh, I mean, you just... Mm, I mean, this is coming from her, and she just did the whole Tsukihi undo thing, you know? Wow, this is beautiful. This is a beautiful locale. Mm, okay, yeah. And we are failing with that right now, for sure. Ooh, this music. She has her cap off. That's notable. Yeah, okay. Okay, how are we going to do this differently? Is that how that works? <laughs> and they like convert them, little Pokemon move? Yeah. And it'll be a five on. Or one on four? Oh, yeah, four of them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do basic counting. Yeah, yeah, well said. Yeah, that's pretty much what we're doing here, huh? T and we're gonna utilize our past self to do that. Past selves. Mm. Mm, all of them are me. You tell them. Take them and connect them to myself. Yeah, the Deco Squad goals, bro. Oh, I hope, bro. Yeah, that's kind of. I kind of like it. I kind of like it, Nadeko. Okay, this is, seems good. Yes. Yes, Nadeko. So, yeah. You got. You have to have them rally to you instead of to like Meek slash God Nadeko. That's all you gotta do. That should be doable. Also, I like that she tilted. She turned her cap a little bit, so that kind of still exposed a little bit more of her forehead with that. So that might kind of, kind of be her like being courageous is her kind of getting rid of that barrier a little bit, you know. <laughs> Freaking Onanoki. Onanoki's sitting there thinking, how could Tsukihi do this? How could they? How could she? Yeah, I mean, surely this will go well. Right? We just got to... Because I like how she's not saying, like, destroy. She's saying connect. That's pretty much, like, the perfect solution in my book. Connect with your past self? That doesn't... That, that sounds lit. Right? And that, and that kind of is, like, her, like, I keep throwing out, we've said the word regression, like, 30 times, but her regressing a little bit would be a way to connect, right? Connection comes off of compromise. So, for them to compromise a bit, I think it would be great. Yay, Onanaki! Or, I mean, uh, Nadeko! With a new chapter. Spinning, we're spinning the game of life. I've already talked about that, but I just love it. Okay, lock in, part four. My goodness, sorry. Where is my hand? Where is my hand? At a bookstore? Why a bookstore? 
Yeah, I agree. <laughs> oh, because that was information on the snakes way back. You got it from the bookstore, yeah? That's right. Okay. I suppose. So we're going to the beginning. The beginning of her s of what she considers like her sin there. Dang, it's like a western like showdown, bro. Yeah? Pull Shinobu into this? Recognize this arm? I mean, she do be kind of strong, though. She could just eat them. Yeah, that would be actually work pretty well. Except you'd need to get her to do it. You know? Aragi! Aragi! Parking area and it says Aragi. That's crazy. Natty? Didn't I just come up with that nickname like 10 minutes ago? Wait, what did I say? Didn't I say that? Wait, what is going on? Wait. I'm Ononoki now? Okay. I recognize this song. Or the Hachikuji? Or gone. Okay, or gone. Hachikuji! Is that Hachikuji? A lot of... Sorry, a lot of, like, they're using a lot of, like... I like how they're, like, Araragi was the parking garage. Hachikuji was the license plate. Like, they kind of... That was cool. Okay. Man, I love the musical remix, too. Okay. We're about to get some crate. There was nobody inside the bookstore. Mm -hmm. Did she, like, hide everybody away? You know? Yeah, where she's, like, avoidant of everyone. Oh, because they were, like, despawning around her. I see. I, I, I would- I could- I could understand that. My goodness, we're gonna get jumped in a bookstore. Uh, that's actually true. We're bringing this out now? I feel, like, I feel like we should have brought it out and, like, talked to him a little bit. Before, but, okay. <laughs> They're using books to do that. That's cute. I like that. Mm. Go, Wrath the Deco! I choose you! Why is that taboo? I mean, Kazononoki said it, but like, but why? A cult. Behind you. Magic. Miknadeko. Spotted. She's studying. Cool. <laughs> she got one of her straps down, bro. Anunoki has zero situational awareness. Alright. Just go backstab her with a piece of paper. I mean, that's kind of the best case scenario here, yeah? Okay. She's underestimating Mikindeko again. I'm worried about her reading occult stuff. Uh, they keep saying this. It makes. Uh... Nah, no, dude, she's feeling it too. Oh my goodness, we're both feeling out like. Oh my goodness, you are. Mikindeko is too strong. She gave her the chisel, she gave the clothes, it were freaking hoed. Yeah? 
Oh, the map? Do you want to... Are you going to summon somebody? Oh my... I can't handle this. Is she? Whoa. Whoa, she's flashbacking to that day. What is she reading? Did I want to escape it? Ooh. Oh, a bookcase is being shoved on you. Oh. <laughs> I think that was Meek Nadeko's behind her. <laughs> Crushed in a hail of books. Yeah, that's not exactly the move, huh? Good line. I like that line. Ooh, 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 ooh. I like that. I should have fought people more? What do you mean? That sounds like Wrath and Flirty kind of respectively. Have better fights, be have better friends. Yeah, what's that? Hmm. Hmm, okay. Hmm, alright. We live those. Oh, oh! Flirting the deck of clutch. Aw, they helped her. Oh, she's about to reconcile with Flirty. Just don't call me Flirty, was that basically? <laughs> True. Dang, Flirty Nadeko Clutch. It's embarrassing, yeah? Thinking about your occupation is the books. That's crazy, because that's kind of about, like, the career stuff. I'm about, to, I'm about to drop this bookcase on you, please! That's what she's trying to say right now. <laughs> Hobbies. Oh, this is kind of sweet. A cult book. Aww. Dang, she's giving her advice on her drawing. Oh, she just gave her advice for the drawing. That's so specific. That's so good. That's her, like, giving approval to, to it. To her pursuing her dream like that. Dang. Okay. Crazy that Meek Nadeko did try to assassinate Nadeko, though. Can we talk about that a little bit? She would have gotten crushed by a bookcase if Flirty didn't just clutch. So... What was the plan there, Meek? Oh, she's promising Flirty Nadeko. Aww. Ooh. Dang, that's so sweet. Wow, she she gave a promise to herself like that. Oh, that kind of hit. That kind of hit. Oh, that was so good, bro. It being the two of them, and then it cuts to her doing it to herself. Oh, man. Are you cut in half again? That would be so funny. Oh, what's up? Dang. Well, now she activated herself. 
Honestly. Lady Nadeko jumped in, bro. <laughs> no, Meek Nadeko isn't dead. No, come on. We, we gotta stop putting disrespect on Meek Nadeko's name. But she was reading magic occult books. I mean, um, maybe? Hmm. I'm not convinced. Children's books and comics are upstairs? Alright, let's check it. Yo, Nadeko, what is going on in that shot, bro? That cut him. <laughs> well, let's see if that's true. Do, do, are people appearing? Mm. Oh, I love that. That's so cool. The different art pieces. Mm. Let the ends justify the means type beat. Oh, that's no, that's, I like that. No, I like that. Never mind what I said. Lots of atonement going on with her. Okay, that's Meek Nadeko's plural. Multiple Meek Na There's a bunch of naked Nadeko's. There's a million naked Nadeko's. My goodness. This is the dream of too many Monogatari fans. Not me, obviously. So, maybe this was a... What happened here? I mean, Meek Nadeko could have, maybe. I mean, surely it was a familiar... I mean, maybe even God Nadeko, but like... Yeah, I mean, God, God Nadeko could have summoned a bunch of Meek Nadekos, I guess. To put in a printer? <laughs> to be like, printer, copy, paste, Nadeko? Yeah, 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 photocopier. Wait, oh, that's crazy. Wait, okay, maybe... Yeah, okay, I could see this being the case. So that would explain why there were two of them. That's crazy. Okay, that's a. I, I can appreciate that twist. I, I, I can appreciate that. So that was just one of the Meek Nadeko's down there. Not. Yeah. What, you don't like a hundred Loomer Nadeko's? <laughs> Pawn. Shogi? You're playing Shogi? It's Shogi! Some Gatsu reference? Whoa. That was a cool board to just, to like, show that. Yeah, there's zombie Nadekos. Oh, Renai's circulation was on the wall there, or on the shelf. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, she's doing it to me, bro. What? She, she's doing that straight to me. Oh, yeah. Let's just find her. And she looks different. Unless she got the hand off, you know. Well, we'll see, I suppose. This is crazy. Mass produced Nadeko. Yeah, 
<笑>ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。
Crap, I said it. Should have left it buried in darkness. I think that's Nadeko's thoughts, yeah? Or is the pose look thing on Anoki's thoughts for some reason? I mean, that's gotta be Nadeko's thoughts, yeah? You know, Anoki, you know. Oh, all the photocopies. I don't even know where current Nadeko is. What did that, what just happened? Did Onoki really just attack current Nadeko? Am I tripping? It really, that's just kind of what happened. I, I can't really tell, because they were looking at each other. Yeah, yeah, you know, she did, she did. She absolutely did. She used Unlimited Royal Book straight at Nadeko. It doesn't matter if somebody was coming up behind Nadeko, because she still would have hit Nadeko. So, current, uh, she saw this as such a horrible idea that just mentioning it was enough to make her go full attack mode. That's what I'm thinking. Crap, I said it should have left it buried in darkness. Who says oops here? I mean, is that- who says oops here? Is that Nadeko's voice? No, no, that's- that's, uh, Onanoki. So that might be Onanoki's thoughts, but still. And she- because that's the thing, she had one use of the ability, and then... She, would, like, didn't even use it to hit God Nadeko, right? I feel like the only reason she would have used it, like, there, other than hurting current Nadeko, would be if, like, God Nadeko was behind her and she said, Oh, nice! You know? But that wasn't the case. God Nadeko's chilling. God Nadeko's chilling on top of his pile of books. Okay, so Ononoki's a rat. That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. Like, like I kind of thought we were chill. That's why I'm confused, bro. I kind of thought we were chill with it. But, like... So I guess maybe it was the idea of not of the of the look at this great match cut by the way. The idea of make her hair like mine. Does is that bad because you're like making a familiar into yourself, you know, or something like like is that not how you're supposed to treat a familiar? And so she's worried that like she's like, "Oh, that's a horrible idea because it will amount to you like like N I don't know, not being harmless or something. I don't, I don't know, Oroki. Like brother, you give no, you give no time for us to talk. Crap! I said it. Is Onanoki a rat? Maybe did God Nadeko take over Onanoki a little bit or something? I mean, that'd be a crazy twist. My only reasoning for that, you know, literally my only reasoning for that is that there's the this shot. God Nadeko's doing the Onanoki spin. I don't know. Onanoki just freaking seems to have taxed current Nadeko. Maybe God Nadeko. Because God Nadeko would have had time alone with Onanoki at the shrine. And she's just getting hyped about murdering. Okay. Well, well, this has gone horribly wrong, and I didn't see any of this coming. That's pretty much where we're at right now. I mean, I really like the flirting to Deco stuff was lit, you know, calling on the past self to help me out with the current situation type beat. That's great. This was really sweet. You know? I'll honestly project all my adoration to her. It's like it's like she's unbottled that that part of her. You know, and now they're in sync, and so it will she, it will help her with her manga. Flirting to Deco, telling her how to draw better is so perfect. I love that absolutely. Um, I assume Wrath Nadeka will be similar at this point. I think they're pretty much good with each other now. So we should still have that ability. Um, <laughs> freaking mass produced Nadeko. <laughs> this is crazy. And where did we get all the bloomers from? Oh, from the images. Because, yeah, we would have, the bloomers would have been mass produced too. So, yeah, I guess... So, I guess what happened is God Nadeko did take Meek Nadeko under under control. Meek Nadeko really just do be Meek. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I mean, I guess that, that was kind of what... I guess my, my concern about the Meek Nadeko's in charge theory is it was kind of like... But, like, I wasn't sure why, you know? And the kind of... I'm still kind of at the problem with God Nadeko a little bit, too. Where I guess the only... Like, God Nadeko just would be... She do be murder... Murder frenzy plus self-preservation. I guess that's enough. Um, whereas, like, meet Nadeko, what would be her reason to try to, like, get Nadeko killed? Or, like, do, you know, what, what would she be planning, right? Um, and so, for God Nadeko to have taken Meek Nadeko and basically hoed her, 
um, or like mass produced her. So she would have basically got her under control, gone to the library, mass produced her, and then sent and then went out with one of them, had one of them lure Onanoki up, jump Onanoki, cut her to ribbons. Um, and then maybe I don't I just do not know what's going on with Onanoki here. That's where I'm that's why I'm completely stuck. I mean, we you were just so chill with it. You were just so chill with it. I'm maybe, maybe she surely hit Nadeko, bro. Let me watch it one more time. They're literally face to face. And also, Onanoki says, if ultimately, if we kill you, every other Nadeko will be eradicated. So she also has the thought of killing, she verbalizes the thought of killing current Nadeko. A few moments pass, they're face to face. Nadeko says one thing during their conversation and then Onanoki swings. <laughs> this is. Bro. I'm not. Onanoki's a piece of work. I'm gonna just tell you, bro. There's a lot of Onanoki lovers out there. This this girl's a problem. Okay, this dull familiar is just an issue. Okay, this is just proof of it. I don't know what's happening, but it's bad. And I blame Onanoki. Am I wrong for that? I just. I can't see myself being wrong for that. Unless God Nadeko took control of Onodoki in some way. But, like, how would that even happen? What would God Nadeko do? You know, like, like, you worship me now. Like, you know? I don't know. <sighs> yeah. I, I, so I guess my, my, I think. What is so bad about this idea? So she's like, I'm going to give her a better haircut. More like mine. So it being unsatisfactory isn't the problem. Her changing it isn't even the problem. Why don't we tidy it up and make it a lot shorter? Just like mine. <laughs> I just can't believe this scene. I can't believe that these two scenes are next to each other. I'm not getting, like, debated with, like, chapter titles, like, chapterings, right? I mean, they, these two just happen so sequentially, yeah? Um, yeah, I think, I think she didn't like the idea of, uh, I, I guess it's kind of similar to what God Nadeko did, huh? I mean, God Nadeko duplicated a bunch of Nadekos, maybe, in a sense, Onanoki's like, this is kind of like current Nadeko trying to duplicate herself, because she's trying to change Wrath Nadeko, and so that's a big no-no. And this isn't the summoning two familiars at the same time thing, because Flirty and Nadeko is gone. So now we can summon a new one. So it's not that coming back into the picture. Yeah. I guess just Onanoki has a problem with that. I just don't really understand why. Or she's compromised by God Nadeko, because I think that could be a chance. But yeah, okay. And then God Nadeko, what? Your, what's your incentive? What's your, um, what do you want, God Nadeko? That's what I don't get. I don't know what God Nadeko wants. Just to murder. It could be that simple, I guess, but, like, wouldn't it be, like, aren't you, like, low-key looking for, like, the moral victory, in a sense, you know? Or, like, kind of, like, with what God Nade with what Flirty Nade like, Flirty Nadeko, okay, all these Nadekos are built off of feelings. It's about how she feels, about current Nadeko, how she feels. So, what feeling was basically channeled through God Nadeko, right? What, like, I mean, we kind of said it. I think the word naivete was said. Naive. Give me it. Naive. Right here. Meet Nadeko who doesn't look forward. Flirty Nadeko who caters to her surroundings. Wrath Nadeko who rages about everything. God Nadeko who acts with divinity and naivete. So, divinity and naivete. I mean, being naive, I guess that would kind of work. Because the crazy thing is, if God Nadeko kills current Nadeko, then God Nadeko would die too. That's what Onanoki said. Is that if current Nadeko dies, they all die. So... And, you know, that makes sense. She's the master, right? She Or she's the, the source of them all. Yeah. So I guess her divinity plus being naive could equal her accidentally killing the source of her power because she's naive, so she's unaware that that's, like, gonna kill her, you know? So I, I, I guess there could be a world where she's acting off of self-preservation, and then it's a, she's actually doing a self-fulfilling prophecy, and she's causing her own death. I, I You know what I mean? That, that seems like a possibility. Um, but it doesn't... I don't know, it's not fully, it's not fully, it's not fully clicking for me. Wrath Nadeko. Where, I mean, we got Wrath Nadeko and Flare Nadeko on our side, so we don't gotta worry about that. Meek Nadeko also seems to have kind of been like, unless there's an original Meek Nadeko that matters more than the others, Meek Nadeko is kind of a non-factor, for real. Um, which is crazy, because I thought, that's, dude, I, like, 
they they were saying it so many times. Maybe it was a like a uh uh like a reverse psychology kind of deal, where it was like a double fake, you know? Where them saying over and over and over that Meek Nadeko is like not gonna be worth anything. Meek Nadeko is just a decoy, you know. The only thing we have to worry about is God Nadeko. Maybe the, them saying that like actually a million times. Um, holy crap! What is going on in the subtitle browser? Uh, was kind of like them trying to make us doubt it, but then actually the doubt they read ahead. I feel like did we just get read ahead? I feel like I just got read ahead, you know, where the original like. They said it so many times to make us sus, but then it was actually true, and so our sus feeling was like undercut. I feel like that's kind of what happened here with with the meat and deco situation, um, especially with the uh, there was one line. It's freaking hard to scroll in this one because there was so much, there was so much uh, like extra stuff, like all the books just filled up all the all my subtitles with a bunch of like nonsense. Look at it, loomer, 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 pawn, pawn, pawn. It's a freaking mess in here, man. I'm just gonna have to scroll normally. But, or like, uh, right when she was walking up to, uh, Meek Nadeko. Here. Where she said, like, um, I have, like, a, suddenly a bad feeling. Uh, I have a new over- like, I, I feel like I've got something fundamentally wrong. Right here. Huh, I just felt a strange sensation. Okay, so, so like, okay, look at that. Meek Nadeko, Flirt and Deco should be enough. She swayed more easily than anyone. She was forced to swap out a school uniform. She had her chisel taken from her. She's basically at the beck and call of the other familiars. That's why. Huh. I just had a strange sensation like something's off. Let's see. Am I overlooking something? So that's pretty much baiting us into that belief that Meek Nadeko is actually, like, has a bigger role to play. But this doesn't at all foreshadow her being... There being a million of her, yeah? Because her being... Mul like multiplied with the photocopier that is an example of her being swayed and being forced into something and so yeah and that's an example of her being at the beck and call of, of another familiar so this whole like something's off what is this applying to because i don't think it would apply to the photocopy situation there's no all these things are just you know like in line now i feel like i'm overlooking something else oh my goodness monogatari why do you do this to me I feel like what I overlooked is even more fundamental than that. Brother, what did we overlook, Nadeko? <sighs> we got baited, bro. They said it so many times and then they played us back. Okay, so... Meet Nadeko. We're at the library, so her going to the libraries and everything. I have no idea, bro. I don't... I feel like we're still overlooking something now with God Nadeko, but... But I'm not sure if I even should feel that way. Wow, I'm in so much doubt right now. Because she says... Nadeko says that she feels she overlooks something fundamental. But then, pretty much everything plays out the way they thought it would, but but worse. You know? It, so it's like, what did you overlook? That that it, that she was... That you could photocopy? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is the overlook that there can you can photocopy that they are drawings and that God Nadeko would use them as drawings, as pawns? I mean, I guess that's kind of an overlook. Like... Like, she was seeing Meek Nadeko as a familiar, like, as a Meek Nadeko, not as a piece of paper, which is what she really is. So in a funny way, like, God Nadeko would have had more, like, wisdom to see the different Nadekos for what they were, pieces of paper, right? So I, I guess that's kind of a move that, but at the same time, I mean, that's not even necessarily true for, for current Nadeko, because current Nadeko is seeing them as pieces of paper because she's using paper on them, right? So I guess, I mean... It would just be overlooking the idea that with the current information we have, with the current twist of there being a bunch of Nadekos that were ph photocopied, it would be that she overlooked God Nadeko's, like, intelligence and ability to use Meek Nadeko. But that doesn't feel right. Doesn't that not feel right? When the entire thing that was building up with the strange sensation was pretty, like, this is just, that's already what we expected, but more. So I, I feel like that's not an oversight. So I feel like there's a different oversight, but I don't even know what it would be. And now I just think I'm tripping. Oh my goodness, this show, this show makes me trip, bro. Man, I mean, it was a, otherwise though, other than the tripping, I mean, great, really good episode in a lot of ways. I, you know, a couple things. I liked how they did this. They, they give each of them a, a, a flavor. Wait, what are all their flavors? Oh my goodness, you can have a Nadeko ice cream buffet if you got each of the flavors. So God Nadeko's red. What is that? 
berry, Godnadeco's berry, Rathnadeco is black sesame, ugh, that sounds nasty, Meeknadeco is milk, Flirty Nadeco is grape, and then Current Nadeco is strawberry. Ooh. I would go with strawberry. Personally, I'd take a bite out of that strawberry gelato. You know what I mean? If I had to choose a flavor out of the Nadeco flavor buffet. But, like, I'm talking about gelato. I just have to make it clear. Um. Yeah. Or, okay. Hmm. Well, okay. Let's, what, let's think. What is our end game going to look like? I could see it. Obviously, Current Nadeco is not just dead, right? If, if, well, I say obviously. I mean, yeah, obviously. It's monogatari. There's no way Current Nadeco just dies there, yeah. So, she lives maybe because she can... Maybe she hears what Ononoki's saying and that gives her enough time to dodge or gives Wrath Nadeko enough time to jump up and push push Nadeko out of the way or something, right? Um, so, either Wrath Nadeko's been used... I, I'm guessing either Wrath Nadeko's been used or current Nadeko somehow dodged otherwise. Um... I don't think Wrath Nadeko alone will be enough against God Nadeko. I think there could be a really cool thing where, like, she converts the Meek Nadekos. I was kind of saying that about, like, let's rally the Meek Nadekos, you know, as as the plan. Because, um, I mean, you could do that. Paper a Meek Nadeko. Spawn the Meek Nadeko. You're mine now. Go get her. Right? Flip her pawns against her. In fact, with Shogi, isn't that a mechanic in Shogi? Whoa. This guy's now cooking with freaking gas, Okay. Isn't that a mechanic in Shogi that, like, you you can, like, use the pieces you capture? I think I, that's a thing. So, shout out Sangatsu for, I think, teaching me that, yeah? And so, with the Shogi analogy of the king and all the pawns, what if we can capture the pawns and then flip them, and then now we have the pawns, right? And so we can get the advantage in numbers and, and overcome it that way. That could be a really cool ending, too, because that would be Nadeko using her new strength that she has, like, discovered with flirty Nadeko of... Look at, like, us connect, like, me connecting with my past self, um, and, like, that promise about drawing her more, right? That, that really good connection. If she can weaponize that with the Meek Nadeko army, I think that could be a way she could beat out God Nadeko. Yeah. But I still feel like we're overlooking something. I really don't know what we're overlooking, and it's kind of freaking me out. And I'm also surprised that God Nadeko is just trying to murder. So, um, I think there are explanations, but I'd be curious if there's another... Yeah, I'm, I'm curious if there's another another layer to God Nadeko's murder, idea to murder, other than just she wants to plus naivete for not knowing it'll kill her. Um, I'm curious if there's more to that. I kind of hope, I, get, I wonder how Nadeko's gonna get, get out of this. I think maybe the shogi metaphor, maybe we can flip the uh, the pieces against against her, right? I have no idea what's going on with God Nad or with Onanoki. Uh, I think Onanoki just flipped on us. Right? Which, again, could have been a couple things. I'm freaking lost on that, though. I think she just didn't like what Nadeko said. And, you know? Or was... A, something. Or God, or God Nadeko did something. Who freaking knows? Um, This was a great scene, too. Where she's reminiscing on that time. And they do a little flashback. If I'd visited the bookstore on another day or at another time, then I might have died from the curse. She's kind of thinking. So, like... She's kind of thinking, like... It's crazy looking in the past and being like, what if what if things were slightly different? The butterfly effect, how different things could have been. And then what did she say here? It was like, fate? Must have been inescapable no matter what happened. Inescapable? Did I, did I want to escape it? I was so happy about it. And then the bookcases come crumbling down. So yeah, I mean, Meet Nadeko did get squished there, but it didn't matter because there were a million of them. If I hadn't been spotted all those months ago, if the timing was just the slightest bit off and I'd visited the bookstore on another day, what might have happened? She died from the curse at the end? No. The discovery in that reunion must have been inescapable no matter what happened. Inescapable? Did I want to escape it? I was so happy about it. I mean, are you talking about that discovery in that reunion? Is she talking about, like, what, Araragi? Like, her reun like reuniting with Araragi in a sense? Right? So, like, because this is what led her up in the... I'm trying to remember Bake better, right? Because she... If the time, if I hadn't been spotted all those months ago, spotted by Araragi when she was going up the shrine stairs, yeah? If the timing was just a slice bit off and I'd visited the bookstore on another day, maybe if she didn't find the book in the first place, then what might have happened? No, ultimately that discovery and that reunion, I think with Araragi, must have been inescapable no matter what happened. Inescapable, did I want to escape it? I was so happy about it. Yeah, and because she was, 
And then that's where like flirting a deco type beat started coming, like her being happy about it and wanting to connect more. But her her thinking back on that and thinking like, did I want to escape from that reunion? That's crazy. That's a really interesting idea there. Um, I mean, she's kind of like, I guess she's like wondering the intent of her meek self back then, you know? That like, was I shy but happy about it or was I shy and I didn't want it? Like what, why was I shy? You know, what was the, the rationale there kind of? Hmm, that's very interesting. Uh, and then I really like, you know, it is, uh, if I was going to end like this, I should have more proper fights with everyone. I wish I'd been better friends with everyone. That's right, Shinobu and Sinjigar, even with them, perhaps? Shinobu and Sinjigar, even with them, perhaps? Who's the them here? Who, who are you talking about? Which them? Like, Karen, Su like, be friend. Are you talking about the friends part or the enemies part? Karen, Tsukihi, Sodachi type B? You know, a lot of, you know, I don't know. <laughs> this, is, this is dopey, too. What even was this scene? What if we... Can, okay. What if she just... She got the power to draw. What if she just draws Flirty to Deco again? Or, like, something... I mean, this shot is kind of crazy. It makes me think, what if she just clones herself and says, F it, Nadeko army. I make... I spawn a bunch of current Nadekos. Something like that. I don't know. Right, that, I, that just makes me think that. I don't think that's foreshadowing or anything. I think this is just a cute little thing they did to to be weird, I guess. I don't know. Freaking monogatari, bro. There, there's a crazy point where I literally, like, something crazy will happen. I'll just be like, yeah, this is monogatari being monogatari. What am I looking at here? I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Is this a plan? This looks like a plan. I don't, I don't know what these symbols mean. They look like little feet marks and like a path, like walk around the block and then go up this way. Wait, what is going- is that just a random thing I shouldn't focus on? Surely, yeah. People were just drawing. The animators were just drawing a little bit, having a good time. Okay. And then there was also- I wanted to look at the background detail for another scene. Um... A lot of these scenes, honestly. Hundred of something, hundred pandas. Aw, they're reading 100 panda books. Where's the shot? Here, here, here. I wanted to just look at all these things on the on the blo on the the thing. So, the Renai circulation. Halloween, they spelled ghost wrong. G-O-H-S-T party. Go host party. Uh, survival life simulator. Okay, board games. Limit ed, limited. <laughs> okay. Nadeko twister block game. I see a pink cube right there. I I take that as a win. I'm in the show again. Holy crap, we're lit. It just says let's play on the wall. All right, nothing too crazy there. I feel like it's good to look. And they're all just reading like kids books. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm very sus of this episode. This episode's very sus. In true monogatari fashion, <laughs> it's crazy, I'm getting deja vu. In, in true monogatari fashion, I thought I was starting to get a little bit of a foothold on the arc. And then it lost me, and I'm like, well, we're freaking, what is going on anymore, you know? Um, but hey, I wouldn't have it any other way with this show, you know? Also, I swear I called her, didn't I call her, like, what was the nickname I gave her, and then Onanoki gave her a nickname? That's crazy. That's crazy. I'm, like, linked into this show in my blood. But my blood doesn't, my brain doesn't understand my blood, so we still have our problems sometimes, and you know what I mean? But yeah, so, a really good episode. I mean, shoot, maybe we call her. I don't know. I don't know what Onanoki's thinking, but that's all I got for this one. I'm just kind of at the point that I'm freaking lost. So, on to the next should be exciting. Of course, of course, of course. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe. If you're new, blah, blah, blah. Comment below if you have anything to say or join the Discord and talk to me other Monogatari fans there. But until then, until the next episode, that's like I'm gonna, I will be seeing you then. Peace.